Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to the first episode of this new tutorial going on on this channel here. This one is going to be about uh, pretty much just creating a game for your mobile phone or your tablets using the Unity game engine. Now this, this tutorial is going to be uh, noob friendly as well, so we're going to try and explain everything as clearly as possible as we are doing it. And uh, yeah, so one thing I'd like to say before we get started is that you are not going to need a device, so you're not going to need a uh, say Android phone or a iPhone because we we can simply use a emulator. Now I will be using my phone a little bit later on, uh, my real phone, so we'll, we'll take captures and actually try it out uh, during this tutorial, but we don't actually need one. Reason is we can do all the same operation that we have on the phone inside the Unity editor and uh, if you want to test it out before we push it, which is something we should do, we can use an emulator, and that we're all going to do that at the very end. But uh, before we get to that point, I might here and there use my real phone to show you example of what it gives us on the device. Okay, so this tutorial is for the uh, layer in between beginner and intermediate. So um, if you come from the 2D platformer game, you're going to have no problem following this. If you come from, if you're new to C Sharp, you might have a little difficulties, but don't worry about it. If you just tag along and follow, uh, I'm sure you can pick up some good, good stuff from this tutorial. So, uh, without further ado, guys, let's get started. And what we are going to create in this one is going to be some kind of a uh, rollerball uh, game. If, if you remember Marble back in the days, or any kind of uh, game that uses a ball that just rolls around, pretty much. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna have a ball rolling around, um, a camera around it, and also some uh, game mechanics here and there. So maybe the, the jump pad once more, and uh, we can pretty much create anything we want at that point. But the first thing I'd like to get out of the way is the menu and the game flow. Uh, we pretty much did that in the very end of the last tutorial, and uh, this time when we create a game, I'd like to get it covered right away. So this first episode is going to be all about creating that very menu flow that we just talked about. So let's stop wasting time and actually get into making that UI. So let's right click right here in the hierarchy, UI, and we're going to create a panel like we always do. Now the setup I want for this uh, game scene, well this menu scene, actually we're going to start with the main menu. So as soon as you open, on, uh, open up the app, this is what we're going to see. This is the scene we are going to see. And uh, I want to get get it out of the way as soon as possible so we have some kind of game flow going on and we don't have to go back later on after making our gameplay because making gameplay is pretty much the fun part. So let's just get rid of the, the boring menu part as soon as possible and then we can just go ahead and code pretty much whatever we want. Okay, so um, I've created myself a canvas, actually I've created myself a panel and uh, that created a canvas and also a event system. Now, um, what I'd like to do for this one is I'd like to have my, my menu in a 3D scene. So I'd like to have this menu in a world space. Because what I plan to do in the very end is I would like to have uh, three of those. So right here that would be, say, the main menu. And you would get like the uh, level selection button and also the shop button. Because we're going to have some character customization stuff. So once uh, if, well, actually, if we press on the level selection, I'd like the camera to do a rotation effect just like this, then look at another uh, panel here that will be all the levels we have. And then if we hit back, it goes back to the main menu. And if we hit on the shop, the shop button, then it would rotate over here and actually show the shop. And uh, during that time, we could have some um, gameplay going on here just to distract the player a little bit and make the scene more alive. So that's what we're going to start by doing in this very tutorial. Let's go ahead and look at our canvas. Let's make sure it is in world space because we're going to be making it a uh, 3D UI. Okay, so now that this is in world space, we can actually rotate it around just like this. So this could be pretty much anywhere in your scene. Okay, so let's put it back and then we're going to start by cleaning up our canvas. So if you go back on your canvas over here, Let's go ahead and put the position X on zero, position Y on zero as well. Same thing for the width, and also same thing for the height. 
So by putting everything on zero, now we can just have this as uh, some kind of UI container. And actually, let's actually name it uh, UI container. So now we have uh, the canvas and we're gonna change that for UI container. Now our panel is inside of that. That is going to be our main panel. So this is going to be the first thing you see when you open up the game. Let's go ahead and make this, uh, let's anchor this in the middle. So by, by holding shift, you're actually going to see the little blue dot pops. So keep holding shift and then click in uh, on this button here and then click it again without holding shift. So now you have it anchored in the center and the pivot point is also in the center. Once that is done, we are going to give this a width. So maybe 500 by uh, 500, let's make it square. Or actually let's not make it square. Uh, let's make it say 250 by 800. That's, uh, that's going to be temporary. Okay, so this is going to be our first menu. Let's put it at a certain height, maybe 250. And let's adjust it using the camera. Or actually, before we actually start playing with the camera around, we'd like to uh, make our other, other panels. So this is the first one. Let's call it main menu. And now I'm going to duplicate this, so Control c Control v And let's make our level selection, selection panel. Now this one we're going to have to uh, move it around, so I'm going to use the rotate tool by pressing E. Then by holding Control, I'll be rotating it on the um, Y axis, just like this. By holding control, it pretty much just snaps to the angle. And I'm going to make sure this is 90 degrees, like this. And then we can move it around, say, right about here, just for testing purpose. We're going to do the same exact thing, but on the other side for the shop. So let's go ahead and copy paste this level selection. So copy, paste, let's name it something like shop. And let's drag it right about here and also rotate by 180, just like this. Okay. So this is pretty much what it is going to look like. Uh, our camera is going to be in the center, just like this. And now we press on, say, the first button, which is the level selection. It's going to rotate this way. Then we're going to have every single level listed here. And if we hit back, it goes back here. If we hit the shop button, it goes over here. Okay. Okay, now that we have this done, we are going to save our scene. So hit Control S and let's call this uh, main menu. I'm also going to create a scene folder in my project. So create folder scenes and I'm going to drag and drop this right inside the scenes folder. Okay, so we got this out of the way. Now let's go ahead and start creating our buttons. So uh, the first one I'm going to be making is on this main menu right here. So go ahead and select your main menu uh, panel. So make sure it is the center one. And then you are going to right click on it in the hierarchy, UI, and we're going to create a button. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of modification. So I renamed that button for uh, BTN. So level selection, just like this. And I'm also going to change the text inside of the uh, text component, which is also inside of the button object. So by changing uh, this text here, I will name this level selection. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create ourselves another button. So I'll duplicate this. I'll actually move it up a little bit before that. Now I'll duplicate this and we go down here, rename this BTN shop. Same thing, I'll go in the text component and I'll just write something like to shop. Okay. That's a good first start. I'm simply going to uh, position the camera really quickly right here. So if we hit play, it's going to look like that and then we can press on the button, but they don't do anything just yet, and that is quite normal. 
Okay, now let's move on to the level selection panel. So this one on the right, and this is where we list all the level we have. Um, this is going to be a little bit difficult, not difficult, but it's going to be a little bit more complicated because we don't know how many levels there is just yet. So what we'll do in the code is we are going to create a prefab, um, prefab button. So pretty much it's going to create a button for every single one of our level. But since we don't really know how many level we have yet, so pretty much the thing that will determine how many level we have or how many level you want to have in your game is uh, we are going to create a folder and we're going to tell the game, go look in that folder, count how many uh, instance, not instance, but count how many objects we have in that folder. And uh, depending on that, we are going to instantiate a X amount of buttons. So um, if you create a new level along the way and you, you, know, you can just put them inside of the folder and everything's going to be taken care of, so it's going to spawn that button for you. Okay, um, so what we're going to do actually is inside that level selection, we are going to create another layer. So I'm going to create another panel for now. Now I like creating panel, but um, eventually I might be removing them. So uh, I'm just using them as a container for now. So we have some visual representation, but maybe a little, little bit later on, I'll just remove the image. And it is still going to act just like a container. So that panel, I will rename it for uh, level button container and this one is going to contain all the level button so maybe just stretch it on the horizontal axis and as for uh, the height I'll put it on something like 75 okay just to give some some space here of course our UI is awful right now but we're gonna take care of the art a little bit later on let's just make sure everything works first Okay, so inside of that container, we are going to create a vertical, actually not a vertical, a horizontal layout group. And this is going to take care of every single children that we put in uh, that container. So it's going to resize and also reposition every children we put in that container. For example, if we put a button, now let's go here, UI button. Uh, not this is bug, but if we just try to move it around, you're going to see it's going to snap right in the center of that. So it's going to take the whole panel space. Now, if we duplicate this, as you can see, it rescaled and also repositioned this button. And we can just keep on going like this. And the vertical layout element is going to take care of uh, just repositioning them and also rescaling them but we don't necessarily want that so what i'll do is i will remove the child force x pen and also the child for uh quit quit, <coughs> quit. so i'll go ahead and remove the child force x pen on both width and height and what we're going to do instead is we're going to go on the button which is now this little thing here so on the button we are going to put a layout element and inside of that layout element, there is the minimum width and also minimum height. So for the minimum width, I'll put that on 128. And for the minimum height, I'll put that on 72. This is a 16 by 9 resolution. So later on when we actually put thumbnails in that, because I, I want to put thumbnails of our level inside the button, instead of having a blank button like that, uh, is going to fit with a 16 by 9 thumbnail, which is pretty much uh, what we're going to use for the display of our game and also the display of our thumbnails. Okay. And yep, so that's going to be pretty much it. We're going to have one button in there. Now, if we duplicate this again and again, as you can see, it's going to go all the way uh, on the right. So. In order to avoid that, not to avoid that, but in order to make this uh, viable, what we're going to do is we are going to go back on the level button container. So this is the, the first, well, not the first, the second panel. And we're going to add the scroll rect component. By adding this, we are going to have access uh, to the scrolling of this container. Now, in the scroll rect component, I know this is a little bit hard to follow right now, but it's going to get easier. In the, in the scroll rect component, you need to assign the content field. 
Now the content field is our container. So you're simply going to drag and drop the level button container inside the content field. What this gives us is, uh, say we had multiple button, so I'm just going to spawn many. Then if we hit play, we can now scroll just like this in our, uh, in our container. Now it also scrolls on the vertical axis. Let's just, let's go ahead and uh, remove that. So back on the level button container, I'm going to toggle off the vertical over here. And if we hit play, I can't move it up and down again, but as you can see, I can scroll through my level just like this. Now we're going to make this a little bit more uh, fun a little bit later on, of course, but uh, right now, this is pretty much how it is going to be just for testing purpose. Okay. And we, we don't initialize our button uh, depending on how many level there is just yet, but we'll also do that a little bit later on. Well guys, that's going to be pretty much it for the first episode. This was a lot of stuff to, uh, to cover actually, but it's going to be, it's going to get better once we're, we're out of the UI stuff. And uh, yeah, so hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, if you learned something, go ahead and leave a like, it really helps me out. If you have any question or comment, just go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.